You asked for it, and I've made it. Yes. This is the video where I will present you to the MFS for FlashForge 5M Pro. And yes, you can say that you are watching something very familiar, right? So yeah, this is the same version, the same design I've made for the Creality K1 and K1C that it's a model already tested and fixed and it works very, very well on K1C and K1. Now it's ported to the FlashForge 5M Pro with a little improvements to adapt it to the, the FlashForge 5M Pro and make it so efficient as it is for the Creality K1 and K1C. So let's talk about this project and let's talk about how the MFS for 5M Pro can help you uh, improve the quality of your prints on this awesome printer. So let's event. I can say that the FlashForge 5M Pro is one of the best uh, printers I've tested here on the garage uh, because it has the same quality as Bamboo Lab printers with a lower price, uh, lower as a Creality printer. So you have the best of both words uh, talking about quality versus price in a printer. I love my printers from uh, FlashForge. I love my 5M Pros and I needed this solution for the 5M Pro because so as you know, I live in Brazil in a city that has a very, very high humidity. And uh, some days when I start printing at the morning, uh, by 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., I can see the quality decreasing drastically because of humidity on filaments, especially when I'm working with ABS or Triton or a nylon or any other material that absorb a lot of moisture. So the MFS is the perfect solution for you if you live in a cold or a very humid CD, okay? So let's talk about this solution. Uh, but before I start showing you the integration be between MFS and the 5M Pro, I have to say something. This project will not integrate with the 5M, okay? So pay attention to that. So the 5M, it's the open version of the 5M Pro. So that version, it's not an enclosure version and the MFS will not fit, will not work for the FlashForward 5M, sorry, but it only works on the 5M Pro. As this is the same version as the, the K1 and K1C version, you have the same facilities, like handle your filaments from the front of your printer, you can use up to three different rows of filaments here, letting the heat generated by the chamber of your own printer pass through the filaments, drying it while you are printing and keeping it dried during all the process. And you can control the temperature and the airflow through this top window where you can work with PLA here without any kind of problem as you can work with ABS, uh, Triton, nylon, or any other material that demands an active dryer, for example. But here you have the advantage of not spending money with extra electricity because you will use the heat generated by your own printer. And no, you will not have problem printing with ABS having the window open here because the temperature inside the chamber will not oscillate as much as it can degradate the quality of your print. So you can work with ABS or Triton using the window here to regulate the temperature and making the, the printer work on the proper uh, temperature recommended by the FlashForge. My recommendation is not to work with temperatures higher than 60 degrees Celsius because it can uh, degradate or reduce the lifespan of your internal components, especially the plastic components, 
but the electronic components will suffer a lot if you work with the chamber temperature higher than 60 degrees. Usually I have been working with ABS uh, on K1, K1C and now on FlashForge 5M Pro with the temperature between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius and the ABS dry very well and keep dry during all the process while I'm printing on those printers using the MFS. So on this version, we have a new hub at the back as the K1 and K1C has the end filament sensor at the outside of the printer, we've created for that version uh, an adapter where you can put the, the end filament sensor connected with the hub, then you can keep that functionality on your K1 and K1C. On Flash Forge 5M Pro, you have the end filament sensor inside the printer, right back here. So it's easy to replace the, the PTFE tube to extend the PTFE tube latch uh, and connect to the new hub of the MFS by removing the top lead and this part of the enclosure. And then you can change the PTFE tube, putting a bigger one and connect to the new hub we have here on the MFS 45M Pro. And beyond that, you have this new adapter here that adds about two centimeters extra on the MFS high, and that will facilitate your handle of filaments as the 5M Pro doesn't have the pneumatic connector for the PTFE tube on the tool head. But this is not a problem because you have enough space inside to put your hand, cut the filament, and change the filament manually without any problem. Actually, I feel that it's easier to do this on the 5M Pro than doing this on the Creality versions, because on the Creality versions, you have to retract, and I don't like that melted filament passing through the PTFE to path uh, to the top, so here you can cut uh, and follow the same process you already have with your flash forge printers, then cut the filament at the two head and then remove and put the other one here to keep using the new filament. And talking about the filament changing process, it's very, very important to make it clear. The MFS is not an automatic filament system by itself. It's a system that allows you to put up to three filaments on the Flash Forge and the K1 version and up to four filaments on the K1 Max. And this system will allow you to handle the filaments from the front of your printer, keep the filaments dried or even dry the filament actively uh, during the process. And while you're using one filament roll, you can dry other two at the same time, but when you need to change the filament, this process is a manual process, unless you integrate the MFS with another open source project like the 3D Chameleon or the ERCF from Vorum Project or the MMU or any other automation system for filaments. But honestly, I don't recommend that by myself because if you are not an advanced user, I don't recommend you to root your printer because that demands uh, a more advanced knowledge and um, some adaptations and configurations that are not very easy to do. But we have a lot of people on the community doing that integration between the MFS and the ERCF2 from Vorum and the MMU and 3D Chameleon. So if you want to try, if you want to, play with that, be my guest, and don't forget to share your experience with the community. Beyond that, the MFS, it's an open source project that it's actually paid. We charge a very, very small amount of, based on two different licenses you can have uh, when you are assembling your MFS. The first one is the person license, that is the cheaper one, and the person license will give you the STL files, the PDF manual with all steps to 
print and assembly your MFS with all details you need to print and the 3MF file with all the beds already configured with the parts you have to print uh, your MFS, including the configurations for uh, amount of walls and supports, everything pre-configured. The only thing you have to do is pre-calibrate your filament and start printing. Beyond that, you have access to a video showing you step-by-step all the assembly process, including the integration with the FlashForge 5M Pro. So on the Pro version, the Pro license, you have access to all files on the personal version, plus you have access to the DWG files, the DXF files to cut the, the acrylic sheets on a laser machine, and you have access to the technical manual. The technical manual has all the specifications about all the parts of this project, allowing you editing the parts to upgrade or creating new parts based on the measurement of the original parts uh, using the step files you will receive on the pro version. So then you can extend the functionalities of the MFS or add more functionalities, more pieces or change whatever you have the freedom to uh, upgrade and improve your MFS and make any kind of adaptation for your needs. Beyond that, you will need some hardwares that are listed one by one with the exactly quantity you will need for this project inside the manual. So you will need some screws, Allen screws actually, you will need some standard ball bearings like 600 o uh, ball bearings. You will need uh, aluminum pipe to hold the filaments here on the filament support. And of course, you will need uh, a couple centimeters of uh, PTFE tubes and connectors to assemble this project and start uh, using it to print with a higher quality that you never had before. If you have any question, if you are not sure if this project is for you or not, please send us a message through our website. I will leave the link at the description, at the peanut comment, and you can scan the QR code on your screen. So I will send you to our web store and you will find a contact link at the top of the website where you can click and send us an email with all your questions you have before you buy this project. And if you already bought the version for K1 or K1C and now you want the MFS for FlashForge 5M Pro, you can send us an email through the same form at the website and you will give you a coupon to have a great discount to download the MFS for 5M Pro. I know a lot of people have been purchasing this projects from our channel and not even using it. They are doing that only to support our work here. So thank you, thank you very much for your support. You have no idea how important it is what you are doing. Even having more than a thousand license of all versions sold in this one and a half year since we launched the version 4K1 Max, uh, each one of you are very, very special for us, for your support and for sharing our projects and for uh, watching our videos. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for each one of this more than 1,000 users that have been using the MFS around the world. Inventors, this is it. Here is the MFS for FlashForge 5M Pro. You asked it for it, now you have it. I hope you enjoy the project and enjoy the benefits of using the MFS, drying your filaments and printing with a higher quality on your FlashForge now. And if you have any other question, please leave on the comments. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and we will see you on the next video. Let's keep inventing.